Hi friends, I'm Sarah Martin with The Country Chemist. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super stoked about today's video because it's been such a long time coming and I know I'm getting a ton of questions in anticipation of its release, the revolutionary demi color that's coming to Saint. So if you kind of want to get all the deets, introduction, um, some of the things you need to know to figure out if it is right for you or not, keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you see all of my tutorials coming with Demi Color because there will be more. And thank you for being here. All right, friends, let's go ahead and get on into it. I know I'm getting so many questions about Demi Color and what exactly it is. Um, if you are a current lover of 3D Foundation from Saint, then you're probably dying to try it. I wanted to give you guys the basic intro um, so that you understand what it is, how it's different, and how you would use it um, in anticipation of its release, finally. Okay, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Saint is coming out with a new line on January 26th, and it is called Demi Color. This is the artist palette with every color that is possibly made in this line. This palette could literally do any face in the entire world, which is incredible. But this is completely revolutionary, completely like any other makeup you've ever seen. So if you are wanting to try it, I will tell you this. You are gonna have to forget everything you know about makeup. This is not a foundation. Completely a breakthrough way of looking at somebody's face. And we are, it is cream. So I know a lot of people, I've gotten questions, people think these are like eyeshadows. These are creams, but these are very different creams in comparison to, to our 3D line. Um, they are much more pigmented. They're almost used as like a stain and you use so much less than you ever would of the 3D line, which if you know the 3D foundation, like those creams are super pigmented. These don't even, those don't even hold a candle to the pigmentation of these, okay? So we're using color science and we're using color science in a way that's never been used before in the makeup industry. And we are still using it to filter out distractions, brighten where we want to brighten and sculpt where we want to sculpt similarly to 3D foundation, but in a completely different mindset. So we are not applying this to the full face. We are only using it where necessary, which makes it so different, which is why it is a standalone product. So um, in the past, when you want to up a blemish, what do you have to do? You have to usually color correct it in some way. Then you have to put a foundation over it and set it and do layers upon layers so it stays. And usually, immediately, what happens? You see texture on your face because you are laying product over product and you're seeing the texture of the products you're laying down, okay? It's never going to take away any texture. The more layers you do, the more you actually will see the texture of makeup and that's just the way makeup is. With this product though, it's not like that anymore. Um, because you use so little and we're actually using color science to filter out excess color, you see no texture because you're not putting a load of product down. You're using such a minimal amount. You're not gonna be able to see that color anymore and it's gonna virtually disappear, which is amazing. You don't have to put anything over it. So this is not a product to be used in conjunction with 3D foundation. They are completely separate lines. This color theory is literally something you can use on any kind of distraction on your face from blemishes, hyperpigmentation, rosacea, under eyes, um, without increasing the look of texture, which I know a lot of people have issues under their eyes with texture, so no texture, um, better longevity, no creasing, because you're using such little product and you're not layering upon layering um, to get coverage and to get it matching. So I will say that the color science is such a simple concept. 
yet it can take time to learn. It is something that is not so inherent. We all don't have, maybe some of us have the color wheel memorized and can think of it right off the top of your head. But if you're like me, I did it not. It is just the color wheel. That is the basics. That is the basics of the science. We are looking at colors in the face. We are identifying colors in the face. And then we are using complementary colors, which if you don't know, are directly across from it in the color wheel to filter those colors. So we're going to, we're picking out the most distracting things on the face and we are only filtering those. This is not a makeup that's going to be applied over your entire face. You might be saying, Sarah, my entire face is distracting, but I promise once you start filtering out those key things, you will notice everything else kind of fades away. It's kind of crazy and hard to explain until you try it yourself and you realize how very little you might actually need to filter out. So opposite colors filter, that is called complementary. If you can't remember them, um, there's some, you can think of holidays like Christmas, red and green, Easter, yellow, purple, or um, sports teams have a lot of complementary colors like the Broncos is blue and orange, that kind of thing. Those are complementary. Complementary colors will filter out that excess color. So that's pretty much the basics of this entire palette. You are going to be looking at certain, like you're not gonna need all of these. I can tell you I don't use all of these at all. Most of these here in the middle are just blushes and lip colors, um, sculpts. So if you're familiar with 3D, um, these are similar to contours, but they're used in the same way. We call them neutrals because they neutralize excess color as well. And then a lot of them around the very perimeter are all bright those are all brightens they're level ones which means they're going to kind of neutralize filter um and brighten those areas of your so, face i will be honest the hardest part is is realizing that the color on a white sheet of paper is not what it's going to look like on your face so learning to recognize what colors are on your face which is completely personal and i'm telling you you'll get have to get a little um, friendly with your mirror when you first start learning your own face. But once you do, you'll be able to recognize colors in your own face. You'll be able to tell um, based on what you're seeing when you apply it, if that color is right or not. Science, um, but just takes a little bit of practice. Again, this is unlike anything you've ever done before. We've never used the colors of the rainbow on your face before. Know that there is a learning curve. Um, but that it gets quicker and faster and easier the more you apply it. I feel like it's similar to 3D in that way. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with application so I can show you guys some things and I can explain to you how to identify excess color. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is look at your face, okay? I don't want you to pick apart your face in any way. I just want you to pick out the top three things that you would consider the most distracting things, okay? So if you were gonna leave the house without makeup and you're like, oh, I can't wear, not wear makeup, what would you want to filter out first? So for me personally, it's always my nose because it's so much darker than the rest of my face. I feel like it sticks out. Um, this spot of hyperpigmentation and usually either a blemish or my under eyes. My under eyes sometimes bother me, These this like, dark inside corners. Um, I do have one healing blemish right now, but it's not horrible at the moment. So I'll just show you guys how, how I'm gonna filter out these things. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys half my face so you'll be able to compare. And I'm just gonna talk you through how I would get started. So I personally like to start with sculpt first. If I was not gonna be doing my full face and I'm just gonna, I need to run out the door in five minutes, I'm just probably going to you know, filter out a couple of those distractions that I was talking about. But since I'm gonna show you guys how to use everything, I'm gonna start with sculpting. Start with sculpt. I feel like it frames out my face and I have much less distractions once I get that on. Uh, I like to start with that first and it kind of 
neutralizes those areas at the same time. So unlike traditional contour, we're not gonna sweep one color across your entire cheekbone. You're going to look at your entire cheekbone and see if there's differences in colors along that. And again, this just takes practice and with time. And once you try it, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you look at my contour area, you're gonna see that I have, I have some hyperpigmentation through here, but I also have some redness, what looks like redness. If you guys, I never knew until Demi that when you get super close, that I actually have a lot of broken capillaries. So two of the things you wanna look for when you're determining color is, is it excessively dark? Because remember, we're not looking for what color it looks like on white paper. We're looking at what color it looks like on your face. You've got yellow in your skin. You've got a lot of different layers of skin of, and water and light reflecting. It's gonna look different than it does on white, right? So for me, what might look brown is not actually brown. We're going to have to pinpoint what the excess color is. And I know this sounds a little difficult, but once you um, learn to recognize your face, it, like once you do it once, you'll be like, okay, then you'll be able to pinpoint what colors are on your face and what color you need to use where. So I'm looking and I'm saying, is that excessively dark? I don't really have excessively dark areas anywhere along my contour. I do in other parts of my face, but not it's not the darkest part of my face. Okay. Um, is it saturated? So when we're looking at saturation, we're looking for a vibrancy. And a lot of times that shows itself as red and purple tones, those brighter tones on our face. And um, those can be veins, blemishes, irritation. Okay, I still have some irritation going they on. They are saturated and dark, it's purple. If it's just dark, it's blue. And if it's just saturated, it's red. So you kind of can look and distinguish that on your face. What is truly red? What is purple and what is blue based on what it looks like on your skin? So for me, I always thought this was redness, guys, always. And it is pretty saturated and you get in close. I wish I could show you truly how um, vibrant they are once you look in close. I have a whole lot of broken capillaries and that's what's always caused my redness. This is why skincare does not solve anything for me. Um, I also get easily flushed, so I always look kind of red, but those areas are actually in between all my hyperpigmentation and my freckles are actually broken capillaries and they're actually purple. So I learned that I have some excess blue, which is making them dark. Some, some, it looks like redness because it's saturated. So I'm saturated and dark. That means I have purple. So a lot of this area through here is purple. And then I have some hyperpigmentation. So this was probably the hardest thing for me to grasp was the fact that this is not brown. <laughs> it's, it's not orange. Colors in your skin that are more yellow. Um, you know, it might look orange, but you have yellow. Guess what it actually is. If you see muddiness or brown, um, looks orange on your skin, it's actually excess green. So there's, there's just certain things, key things you need to remember to look for and you'll be able to pick up those colors really easily. So I obviously have a whole lot of green on my face because I have a whole lot of hyperpigmentation. Um, so what's the opposite of green? red. So I'm going to have to use pinks and my red sculpt in order to kind of minimize that hyperpigmentation. So first of all, I'm going to just take it one little spot at a time. You want to pick a brush that is going kind to fit the area of your face. So there are specific, there's five specific brushes just for Demi and you will use this tiny little spot brush, probably most of all, to really pinpoint color. 
For my contour, I like to use the shape brush, okay? It's kind of this bigger, it's the biggest one um, that, that we have. And I either use this small end or I kind of pinch this end so I can kind of just place the color where needed. Now, I do have a larger area right here along my contour line that really, now I'm touching it so I'm bringing blood to the surface, but it really doesn't have any hyperpigmentation there. Um, and it's really just kind of the yellow tones of my skin. I'm not super red way up there. My redness is more in this area. So I'm gonna pick up the Violet Sculpt, okay? And that's because that is the opposite of yellow. And I'm just gonna place it only where I need it. Okay. Now, if you place it in the right place, you don't have to do any blending. It's virtually just, and I'm creating depth in my shadow right there. I always try to create the most shadow way back here, um, where the shadow would be the darkest, just like I would with 3D. Now, as you see, I keep moving in here. Um, that's where my freckles start. So I'm not going to use purple. Okay. I had just yellowness up there. I wanted to create depth, so I used purple. I'm not going to put purple there because I actually have hyperpigmentation, which is green. So what am I gonna use? I'm gonna pick up my red sculpt. And it's just kind of funny because when I, for years, I'm so used to 3D foundation, I always steer clear of any warmth in my contour because it makes my skin look more red but if placed in the right spot, it actually neutralizes. So I'm not placing it where I have redness, I'm just placing it right where I have that hyperpigmentation, right there. Can you see that? I might have to blend a little. I'm gonna apply it a little heavier than I probably would in real life so you guys can see it because I know things don't always translate to the camera. Now up here again, this area right here is just, is more red. Now, most people's con like cheekbones are not as complicated as mine. I do have a very colorful face. I realize that not everyone does. Ha not everyone has redness and hyperpigmentation and all of the things that I do. So just think of it as this is a great way to practice because I have a lot of things to cover, not cover, we don't cover. I have a lot of things to filter. So I'm gonna go into that yellow sculpt right above there. And I'm kind of skipping this hyperpigmentation, but just right there and see how that kind of neutralized it out. I'm gonna go a little bit farther right here. And I'm pinching this. Brush. Now I know I'm gonna put my blush right here anyway, so it does not have to be perfect because it's gonna kind of filter more. So put a little bit more purple right there. Okay. All right, can you see the difference? So. I went ahead and sculpted that side and can you see that like, I feel like this spot already looks less distracting than it did before. So that's a little bit of how I would do sculpt on that side. Um, my forehead I feel like is a lot easier. I do have hyperpigmentation right here at the top of my hairline. So that's excess green, meaning I'm gonna place the red sculpt just right there. And I'm gonna try to just do half my face so you guys can see. I do not have much, um, actually I have like no hyperpigmentation or redness right here along my hairline. So I'm gonna pick up that purple, but can you see I have a vein going through my head right here? I'm gonna kind of skip that area because I don't wanna intensify the vibrancy of that. I'm just gonna kind of go around that vein Got that one a little too close to that vein. And then that vein, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's not super vibrant. 
it's that means it's not purple because it's not super bright um it's dark and it's almost that um dark but dull it's not vibrant can you see that not vibrant it's dull when it is dull that means blue and th so that one is blue green dark means excess blue dull means more green so blue green so i'm gonna pick a look at this in between blue and green um that would be orange okay so we're gonna go into the orange sculpt and again i'm gonna pick that small brush and i'm just gonna put it right where that vein is so that it disappears now you do not have to be this picky You could totally just use orange sculpt on that area and it would help that minimize that as well. Okay, so I'm sculpted this side. If you wanna do the jawline, I have mostly green along my jawline since I have hyperpigmentation. So I picked up that red sculpt. All right, guys, so I kind of showed you a little bit about sculpt. Um, I am gonna sculpt my nose a little bit more, but let's talk brighteners and filtering because that is the main part that you're going to be using to filter out distractions. If it's not along a sculpt area, you use a brightener to filter it. Um, so the brighteners are your level ones, all right? so. This is the part where you really, so I went ahead for simplicity's sake and I pulled out my level ones of those main shades. I can't fit them all in my hand that you're gonna use. Okay, so we have violet one, blue one, green one, yellow, orange, and red, which is looks pink. Okay, so those are your level ones. That's what we're gonna just stick with. There are variations. There's still like a lot left of different colors. Um, in fact, if you wanna see like what all of the colors we have, okay, so it shows level ones around the absolute outside. All of these neutrals here in the center are our sculpts. The level three to sevens are like lip and cheek colors. Um, and then there's some level twos as well, but Mainly, we're gonna be sticking with those level ones. And there are, say like, so this one's orange one, there are a red orange, orange red, violet red, there are more. But for simplicity's sake, you really can do it with just these, just these uh, six, they're six. And I'll be honest, I've never used blue in my entire life. So, you're not necessarily gonna need all of these, but I'm gonna kind of show you what we're gonna look at. So like I said before, first thing we wanna do is we wanna pick one distraction. So let's go ahead and do this spot down here because it is bugging me. <laughs> this is a healing blemish and there's a few places kind of on my chin. So let's just kind of tackle those real quick. Okay, so we're gonna pick out a distraction and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the darkest points within that distraction and we're going to identify the excess color okay so we're not no longer looking at giant areas anymore we're no longer thinking as the under eye as one area and we're just going to sweep a color across the entire thing okay you're going to realize that if we look at the darkest points like if you look at my under eye really close i actually have a whole lot of dark spots of freckles that once i filter suddenly it no longer gives the appearance of a dark under eye. Same kind of goes with every spot. Any spot you look at, if it's bigger than a sesame seed, so this is a great example. This looks pretty large. Can you tell that there are, there are numerous colors within that? So if I was going to filter this, first thing I'm gonna do is look for the darkest points within that and we're gonna identify that excess color. So if you look at this darkest point, you can see it's right there, okay? 
There's some darker areas right here. And we're gonna start there and things fade away as we kind of hit those dark points, filter them out, and you'll see what colors you're left with. Because anything larger than a sesame seed is not one color. It's gonna be multiple colors. And that's just the nature of our skin and our face because we're made up of so many different colors. The first thing you wanna ask yourself when you're identifying colors in your face is number one, is it excessively dark? Like when you're looking as your face as a whole, is it the darkest point on your face? Okay, and it's it's not the darkest, okay? So I'm gonna say um, if it's excessively dark, that's just telling you you have excess blue in that spot. So then we go to saturation. Is it vibrant, okay? So vibrant is almost like, think of hot, think of heated, think um, a really angry blemish, um, really irritated skin, a really vibrant vein popping out, okay? So I have some vibrancy right there, if that helps. See that really purple vein that goes through my eye? That is vibrant. This looks dull. So if you see something that looks dark and dull, it's blue green. If it looks muddy, um, brown, orange, that's green, excess green. If it looks um, ashy, shadowed, um, or even a dark purple, then that's usually excess blue. So the first thing we do is we try something and there's, there's, that's pretty much how you learn your face. So you're gonna pick the smallest brush for just that color or just that spot. Okay, so I'm gonna pick the spot brush and I'm gonna say that that looks pretty muddy to me. Um, you're gonna look at the color, you're gonna look at the spot and you're gonna just touch color to color and that is the most important thing you don't want to get outside of the spot or it can cause what we call a halo which would make a new color which will give you a new distraction you're only wanting to touch color to color. i feel like i might have a little bit of blue in there let's try it and see so i'm just gonna touch and you're gonna use so little you guys think of using the least amount possible and you guys know I preach using a light hand in 3d all the time there's no like I've been using this for months you can't even tell I've touched it that is how very little you use of this product you shouldn't be able to see much on the brush I'm gonna try to look in the mirror because you do have to So I touched the darkest part with some orange to just remove the excess blue. And what is left now looks really muddy to me, okay? It looks kind of like a spot of hyperpigmentation, which is excess green. So I'm gonna just pick up a touch of the R1 I hope you guys can see because it's impossible to do dimmy in a phone. I'm just putting that out there right now. It's impossible. Okay, so that spot is gone, but now I, now I see this guy right next to it. Actually, I think that might be a healing, a healing one as well. Now, if you touch color to color and you suddenly see texture, you have the wrong shade. All right, let's do some more color solving. I just irritated my nose a little bit. A little masny, you're welcome. That way you can see. <laughs> um, it got more angry, it got more vibrant, um, but it's not super dark right there. But if you look, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on camera. Inside here, um, I know I'm not alone. I got a lot of um, capillaries, which are in that more excess blue, purple realm. Um, for me personally, my 
get color corrected best with that yellow orange, which is another um, one color. And all I do is I touch it and then I'm gonna go right on the broken capillary. I don't know if I can see this in the phone. Only touching color to color and it disappears. So the hardest part is just identifying and placing. Okay, so I'm gonna add those to my broken capillaries. And now I've touched my nose. <laughs> So it's even more red. So those broken capillaries are still crazy. Those have been color corrected. Now I just need to tackle this area of my nose, which again, if you look really closely, the reason it's so red is I've got more broken capillaries on this side of my nose as well. Okay, now I'm gonna stop touching it so it's the blood can kind of simmer down and it's not gonna be quite so red still. Place and pray, walk away, let it kind of if you're if you're easily flushed like I am. Okay, so I'm gonna move to this guy and I'm going to do similar down here. I'm gonna look for the darkest points first, okay which more or less is excess blue because they're super dark. And then I'm going to um, see what's left. I wish you guys can see better what I'm doing. If you can see it, you have too much. It's very easy to get too much. This spot brush definitely picks up a lot of product. Okay, so I've already minimized it a lot with the excess points, the excess blue. Now I'm, it looks orange, it looks muddy, it's excess green. So I'm gonna pick up pink, that R1. And I'm only touching color to color. Okay, so like, I would be happy with that. I don't need it to completely disappear, but it's no longer a distraction on my face. If I can step back and be like, I don't see it from a foot away from my camera, I'm good, right? So there you go. That was just using orange and red for the excess blue and the excess green. I'll be honest, the hardest part for me is to learn not to put something underneath my entire under eye, that it's not always necessary. I've always had um, blue, purple darkness around my eyes, but it wasn't until Demi that I realized how very little of it is actually dark. Um, and the rest of it is just simply shadows created by hyperpigmentation that kind of just increases the look of darkness, but I naturally have a brightness under my so eye. I want you, I know I'm not the only person out there. I really want you to look at your area around your eyes and really be careful not to over brighten. You don't need to look. There's nothing that says being bright white underneath your eyes is more beautiful than having multi-dimensional colors under your eyes as long as it's not distracting to you. So for me, 
The one thing that really sticks out for me is this area right here. And you can tell it's dark, but it's dull. My spot brush, because I prefer it to really hit those. Okay, now then I have a vein on both sides of my eyes that goes from here all the way up into my eye. Um, and Demi can also be eyeshadow, guys. You can do an entire full face with Demi. Um, I'm not gonna get into that today, but I am going to use my yellow um, to counteract that purple because I have a very vibrant vein and I'm just gonna touch the vein. like so. All right, so as I move down here, um, this area I've always just thought was so dark is actually pretty dark because I have a lot of hyperpigmentation creating even more of a shadow there. So I'm first just gonna look the darkest points of what looks green and mulchy, what looks brown, muddy, and I'm going to, I know that's green, I know that's those hyperpigmentation spots, and I'm just gonna pick up the pink on just those areas. Sorry, I'll pick up my mirror so hopefully you guys can see. Okay. And then once I get rid of that, I'm left with that area, which is super green. So still hyperpigmentation. Okay. And then you'll see how, I don't know if you can see it on camera, then it turns vibrant. Okay, once I take that green away, it's very purple. Now, yellow is way misused under the eyes, so make sure you do have a true vibrant. Um, if it looks dark purple, sometimes it's just blue. So um, I usually recommend just trying a little bit of orange on it first, okay? Seeing if that very darkest area kind of go away. Because that dark purple usually is just excess blue. There might be a little bit of purple left. You can tell here it starts looking almost red. That's the purple. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch that. Just a touch of yellow. Okay, and you'll see that most of that shadow got taken away and there's one left right there because that is hyperpigmentation. Told you guys I got a lot. Okay, this entire area right here, see how it's almost yellow green? Usually I use a red violet on that or violet red but i'm going to show you i'm just sticking with pink so you guys can see just touch color to color the area starts to filter out And you guys, I'd be, I'd be here all day if I sat here and tried to touch every one of my freckles. I have a lot. I am just putting them to where I'm gonna eliminate the under eye. And you guys saw, I did not put a whole lot under my under eye. I don't have to worry about it creasing or looking cakey. I see no texture whatsoever, which is crazy. Now this side, you know, I still have a lot of natural color variation. There's nothing wrong with having color show. You don't have to be super bright white in a triangle. Um, 
that is a different way of wearing makeup, okay? So this is natural, healthy, glowing, and I'm showing my skin. That's just a different preference. More than likely, you will not have to touch as many spots as I do. So I promise if, you can, if I can do it on my face, you can do it on yours. Okay, friends, so I think I've talked long enough for my introduction to Demi. I've done part of half my face. I hope you guys can see the difference. I haven't even done, I'm gonna finish my face. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, blush on and lips. I hope that helped you give you a nice introduction to Demi. Uh, just remember, we're not trying to remove the color of our face. We're not meaning, we don't, or we're not trying to be colorless or beige. We just want to filter the, what we find the most distracting things of our face, and it might be different for each of us. Um, but I picked I picked the hardest side of my face. I can see my skin. I see no texture. You guys, it's incredible when you try this because you look like you're wearing nothing on your skin. And I know I've always been a huge fan of, of 3D because it looks like skin, but truly, this is in a class all by itself. It truly looks like you can't visibly see any makeup with the naked eye. It's really crazy and really cool um, to be a part of such a revolutionary product. And I can't wait for you guys to try it. I know there's going to be a lot of questions, um, but as an artist, I'll be here to help you along the way. And let me know if you guys have any questions. I will share um, my before and afters so you can see the true magic of Demi. Let me know if you have any more questions or if you are interested in trying Demi for yourself. I can definitely help you pick out what you need to get started and help you along the way. As always, thank you for being here and watching and I love you guys.